Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is like a bittersweet day. Honestly, I'm probably gonna regret saying this, but today we are doing one of the final mods on the truck. There's actually only like two things left that I really wanna do to this thing, and today we are gonna knock off one of those final things. You guys know that when I bought this thing, I said I didn't wanna to do too much to it. I wanted to keep it simple, clean. I also told you guys I bought this thing for a purpose. There was kinda of two purposes. One purpose is to tow around all my cars and, and be a truck when I need a truck. Tow around cars that I pick up when I buy, tow around cars when we're going to the track, tow around things to go to the dyno. That is like the major thing that this truck does, but it also just fills that little void in my life that I had when I was missing a truck. Cause it's a big part of me that's like, I just wanna go down like a random back road and go fishing at some stupid pond at the end or like load my ATV into it or whatever I like just truck stuff you guys know that all trucks come with like a rake so the front end sits lower than the back end so that when you put some weight on it the back end will squat and then the whole truck will be level but because we put the four inch lift truck on the Silverado and the whole thing sits level now so even just putting a little bit of weight makes the whole thing squat which is my main issue with this truck this truck already has like 14,000 kilometers on it I've had it for like three months or something like that it's ridiculous how much and over 50% of that has been used for towing. I didn't think I would have this thing loaded up as often as I do, but seeing as I tow with it so frequently, I had to do it. I, ha I had to do it too. We had to get the bags, boys. You know, you already know we had to get the bags. This is gonna be 10 times easier than putting air into a car. Uh, you can just tell by the size of the box, dude. Like these are these are such small little boxes. So much better than the process on the BRZ. Not that it was bad, but this should just be like way, way easier. So you guys know, of course, if you're gonna put air in your truck, you can put air in your car, you can put air anywhere. I had to go with the airlift. We have airlift in the BRZ, it's killer. Never had any issues. So when we wanted to get air in the truck, went straight back to airlift. So what I got here, is the load lifter, <laughs> the load lifter 5000 Ultimate Plus. Uh, so this just came with like stainless lines. It looked like, to me when I was weighing out the options, the Ultimate Plus looked like the one that was gonna kind of last the longest, especially in the weather we have here in Ontario, and also to do the best job. I also went ahead and I got some management. I'm gonna show you guys later why this is like so important, in my opinion. So I went with what is called the Wireless One. It has an easy mount bracket, the compressor and all that stuff's already on like a little plate. And for anybody that doesn't know why you would even do this, when you're towing, and the front end of your truck comes up off the ground it one makes it a lot less stable you have a lot less traction on the ground so it affects your steering it also affects your braking and it just affects the ride quality and to be honest it makes you look like a nice car on a trailer a nice trailer and a nice truck and your truck just looks like it can't do the job This is the money right here. These are like, these are like the nice bags. This is what I have in like the front of the BRZ. A lot of the bag systems that I've seen are like sleeved bags, which I'm sure there's nothing wrong with, but these ones are just like obviously a lot nicer. The only thing I knew I had to do for sure was take off this bump stop, because I know that that's exactly where the bag sits. Um, so we ripped those bump stops off, got the wheels off. You can see like right here, there's a nice little platform. And then right down here, there's like this little square, which I'm assuming we're gonna utilize to put the bags in. And then there's a new bump stop in here. So you can actually technically never really like bottom out. There's like a lot of line holes, which I'm not entirely sure, but <laughs> we'll probably figure that one out. And then we got like the brackets. I'm assuming each bag kind of sits in its own bracket plate for the top and bottom. Came with more brackets, more brackets, and uh, some more brackets. And then this, I'm not entirely sure how much of this we're gonna need because I'm pretty sure putting the management probably deletes some of these. I think this is like a filler line, the little valve attachments right there in case you didn't get the management. Oh, and also, I never even told you guys what was in this thing. Boom. Oh my God, dude. You can get these things to be massive. Look at the size of mine compared to that photo. So these guys are little spacers, this thing. Beautiful is the size of the spacer that we put in the rear So this will put the bag at the exact same height that we dropped the axle to get the lift in the back which should make everything nice seamless You know what I'm excited for a new house? Why? I'm excited to just be absolutely spoiled and have a lift again Have two lifts so I got this little brake line spacer on and then I put one up there that like spaced it away from the frame, which I'm assuming just kind of makes room for where these bags are gonna go. I figured out what, the, why there's so many holes, dude. You gotta mount it. I don't know what I was thinking. There's, there's literally, there's only two on each side and then one air hole. These ones are dead ends. Come on, Robbie, figure it out.
Yo, this is so simple. I mean, I'm comparing it to putting like bags, like full air ride in a car. So I don't know if that helps making it simple. I don't know what it looks like for you guys. Does this attach to that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Just don't worry about it. We'll deal with that in a minute. It literally just like clamped on to the, the little flat part that was already there. A lady at Airlift told me that because I got the spacer and I had a lift, whatever, that this was gonna be a bit of a stretch. But she said it's gonna stretch a bit, but that's totally fine. So we're going with those words. Lower the vehicle or raise the axle while inserting. That's how we're gonna close this gap. Because boys, let me tell you, I was smiling. But my heart was breaking because I was like, there's no, no way. There, there's no way. Keep going, keep going. Nice. Okay, that side pretty close. This side is pretty close. All right, jack it up like one or two more times. May as well just get this like right touching so we can assemble it properly. That's mid. Okay, stop. We are going to need to do this one more time. See, like you can get it on there, but there's no, no way to tighten that. Okay, we can keep going there. Now's the part, Ooh, my fingers, they can see my hole. We're out of gloves, man, this is the last, this is the last glove. Okay, so this is, this is the best part of what I'm doing here. A lot of people have bags, um, and then the next step for this kit would be to run this line to wherever you want to put your, your air into it. So, essentially, if you were to do it just with just the kit, which is totally fine, you just put like these little valve stems where you would hook up like an air compressor, put it on there, and it would fill up the air inside each bag. And my original plan was to do something super cool where it like came out of here, which they actually recommend in the book. And it like, you would have the two little valve stems coming out of here where these screws are instead. So it would still hold your plate on and you could just walk up to the back of it with like an airline and like and put air in it, which is rad. Regardless, if you're just doing bags, that's it. Like that, and that was easy. Like if you're just installing the bags, it is so easy. To be honest, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be just as easy. It's literally called Wireless one, easy mount, and from the photo, <laughs> it looks like it's gonna be just as easy as the rest was. More official installation zip ties. Dude, this is actually beautiful. So there's like a tiny little ba little baby compressor here. This is the management, and you literally just U-bolt this over your frame. The reason I bought this in the first place, if you just randomly are out somewhere, the other day I gave Chris my truck to tow a trailer, or a boat. You know, things like you're not expecting, if you just all of a sudden need to put it in there, you have air on board already. So you can always air it up, doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter if you have to get somewhere close to the gas station. You don't have to put in like 100 pounds in the bags and then drive for two hours, which will be extremely uncomfortable, I think. You can just like show up comfortably, air up comfortably, and leave comfortably, I hope. I gave you this whole speech and I have no idea if it's gonna be that easy, I have no idea if it's gonna work that well. I'm just super fired up about this, in case you can't tell, because it's it's literally like having the management inside of a car. And I am extremely used to having management inside of a car. Okay, first of all, we need to make sure this will even go around. Something here smells like actual poo. I might have run over some actual poo, because that's all I smell. <laughs> that's how I had it in the book. But can you see it? Mm -hmm. It's only for getting down. Like mm, I don't like that. The drill is going to be too big to get a straight drill. Oh, I got a 90 degree drill. Heck yeah. Look at this thing. I think Gucci store. Oh my god, this is the Louis Vuitton drill. Woo! Oh, get me one of these. Oh no. Oh no, we're out of batteries. Sweet. That is much better. Oh nice, dude, look at this. It's just gonna run right in there. Boom. All right, what do we have to work with for air intake? Yuri, that's actually pretty long. Not. Enough to get into the engine bay. Definitely enough to get us somewhere in the back. Dude, if I can get this to click in here. Oh no. Try that one more time. <gasps> oh my God, that is the best placement ever.
with the spare tire out of this thing, dude, you can literally like sit under here, not straight up and down, but you can sit under here and work, which is mint. I don't know why I started under here. That doesn't make any sense. So we self tapped it in right there, which is really nice because you don't see it at all. Even if you're like down below, you don't even notice it. I got everything wired. The wiring harness runs up and over and then just like on the outside of that loom all the way up. Then you can see this is the airline that actually goes to the bag. So this comes up, goes up right away, right over that little uh, cab mount. And then it runs along the same wiring harness just back here, um, but there's no more little clips. So I just zip tied it across this harness and it runs all the way to the back where it meets up with this one. I left this enough slack that like it still moves around. So if there's movement in the bag or the suspension or whatever, this can still chase it. And then both sides are the same. It just kind of goes right up through the frame, pops out on the other side, if you guys can see that, and then runs along again, that same big fat wiring harness to the back. This side comes down. There's a little bit of extra on that one. So I just kind of like bundled it up. And then you guys can see that one comes down, goes through this same little frame rail. But the reason they both come back here is because I wanted to make the lines as even as possible so that they kind of have like the same amount of pressure. So this T right here connects the driver's side and the passenger side uh, braided lines. And then this little T part that shoots right off the top is the one that goes straight up all the way to the management. But they give you two T's. What I ended up doing was just running a second T right out to the license plate you guys can see from the back. So that one goes right to the license plate hole and then this one you guys will see is just kind of like a dud, it just hangs out right there. And the reason for that is now the license plate is held on with valve stems, which is actually like super rad. So this is the valve stem that's connected to the whole system. And then I just, I don't like things looking uneven. So this one, there's literally, like if you put air into this, it's just gonna shoot out the other side. This is just a blank hole. But they match, they look the same when you look at it, which is why I ran two. Um, and I basically ran that in case anything ever happens to like the management or any, any issues, I can still manually pump this up. If I need air and my remote's not working or something isn't working, you can still add air from right there, which is sick. So that's like a little bit of like, kind of like a fail safe, but I think that's it. Like everything's plumbed, it's all tucked up, zip tied out of the way. So now boys, with my clean hands, we can finally, finally touch the remote. Dude, it's so simple and it takes batteries, which is extremely rad. All we should have to do is plug this fuse into the relay, give this boy a little bit of power, and do you want to do the honors? Pull what? that, pull that, pull the little pull guy. Oof. All right, so. <laughs> Yo, I love having new toys. I don't know how like instant this is, but let's say we want ten. Oh, it does raise too. <laughs> With no weight, it literally jacks the back of the truck up. Good call on taking it out of the garage. Bruh, that's so easy. Wait, what is that warning light? Slow leak. I feel like I can hear it. Oh, there we go. This hose wasn't all the way in. No warning light, baby. All right, so it says minimum ride height is five PSI. So what I'm gonna do is bring that to five. <laughs> My truck airs out. Yo. If I bring this thing to five, I think if I just hold that. Nice. And for the air inlet in the photo, they had it just kind of like tucked up as high as they could against this frame rail. But honestly, I just went by like dirt splatter marks. Like you can see the whole frame's kind of like dirty. So I just chased it, chased it until I couldn't see dirt anymore. And dude, I got the thing so high up in the, in like the, the, the box side. You can see it actually comes through right here. So I just use one of these open holes like in the fender liner. We put the cross track on here because it's just like the, the most simple thing to load. Dude, I never want to load anything out. That was the easiest, fastest, most comfortable load of my entire life. That was like literally 15 seconds. Right now, this thing should be, if we wake it up, should still just be chilling at five. So five is my base program, preset five. And now for the video's sake, I'm gonna try and get this like exactly where it was before. In real life, you could probably even just eyeball it. But. Truck's at 41 and a half, and before it was at 43 and a half inches. I'm just gonna start at 50 and see what happens. Okay, that's 50. Yo, that's like almost it. We'll give it, we'll give it, we'll give it maybe 60. What do you think? That's it, baby. Check this out. Okay, the wind can relax for a second. Yo, it looks so good. Usually with the trailer on, this thing looks like a little turd. So one thing I noticed right away, I'm gonna have to get a bigger drop because this hitch was a perfect drop when the trailer uh, sat flat 
because the truck sagged, but now the truck goes up. I need the trailer tongue to go farther down to get the whole trailer sitting kind of flat. Not doesn't really matter. I know you guys don't really care. I'm gonna just set this to 60. That way I don't have to up, 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 up all the way to 60 next time. And you know what? I'm gonna throw this guy right up here where it belongs with this little clip. Cause boys, we got the app, dude. But it's rad that even the controller can come outside though. Cause you can stand out here and air it up so you can see where it's at versus the BRZ, you have to do it from inside unless you have the app. All right, I got the cross check strapped up. You guys know we had, had to give it a quick little road test before we do, oh, well, there's not really much left to do, but, but before we end the video. So I think actually what I'm gonna do, we should probably start with no air in the bags because I've never drove with the cross check on the trailer before. So I don't even know how it feels. All right, so let's put this guy to five. Let's see how this cross check pulls. Poles, toes, as long as it stays on, I'm good. It's like, really, like it's not like we're towing a ton of weight, like a massive, massive, like enclosed trailer, but like right there, I don't know if they could see it, but like when you hit a bump like that, it really slams the ass end down and it makes for like a weird, like you're getting pulled in reverse type feeling. Does that make any sense? I guess I'm used to it. So I've, I'm saying it feels normal, feels fine. And this is what I'm used to towing feeling like. So I feel like this is a good road because it like sucks to put it to the test, so put this thing up to 60. Nice. From outside, it's super loud, but from in here, it's, it's pretty good. That's 60, boys. See how she feels. I can instantly tell you it's different, but I don't know what, I don't I don't have the vocabulary just to, to say what it is. But like, for the fact that this road's constant bump, normally it would always, you would always feel like that little dead spot in the gas almost, where you're like, whoa, whoa. But this just feels like I'm driving a heavier truck. Like that does not have as much of the, the dipping. And like technically speaking, this is way safer because the truck's actually level and like it'll grip the ground and facts and stuff. The more I drive it, the, the, the better it feels. I can't think of like the right word to describe feeling. Aside from saying it feels like I'm driving my truck with nothing on the trailer, but with the weight of a trailer behind it. It just feels like I'm driving a heavy ass truck. Yo, the cross truck's a beast on this thing. Yo, honestly, I'm super hyped on this. Like this was such an easy install. It looks super clean. Like when you're just looking at the truck, you can see the U-bolts cause they're still fresh. I'm sure like after a while, they'll kind of get dirty and blend in. Dude, it looks so clean. And check it. So this one, this one will have nothing in it. It's just a dead end on the other side. But this one, if anything failed or whatever, I needed for some reason to put air in there. Watch this. <laughs> That's pressure going out of the bags, boys. That's dope. So, only thing I gotta do now to make towing perfect is to get a more of a drop hitch, because that's, I was feeling a lot of this angle. After we stopped filming, I took like an even more aggressive road, and you could feel the back of the trailer kind of pull the back of the truck up, but that's just, because that's not set up properly, so. This was super easy, 100% would recommend, especially getting this like easy lift, or easy mount, one wireless, oh my God, the words, the words are so hard. The wireless one, with the easy mount, 100% would recommend. Just cause like having the phone app and the button, like why would you not want that? So now I gotta unload this cross track after I just loaded it up for literally just a ride around town. So that's all I'm gonna have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are stoked. Make sure to check out Airlift. I'll leave a link to the stuff down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Peace out and stay committed. Okay, we just spent the last three hours trying to get a new spline drive lock nut. Uh, when I gave my truck to the body shop, they said they took the wheels off, but they claimed that they didn't lose this even though it's missing. Doesn't matter. I just wanted to remind you guys that like the stupid little sh problems happen to everybody. So it took a couple hours to find someone with the exact same spline drive. We got one, we're good, we're back in business.